Hey people, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we will talk about a new revolution. The world is moving towards renewable energy to save the planet from being destroyed by pollution. There are several ways to generate renewable energy, but one of the most common and easy is solar energy. Scientists have unveiled a new type of solar cell that is revolutionizing the renewable energy industry, known as perovskite. What is perovskite? How is it so much better than standard solar cells? Join us as we bring you all the details on the perovskite solar cells that are finally coming to market. Let's get started. Today we'll take a look at the game-changing perovskite solar cells that have the potential to transform the solar energy sector as a whole. Due to our bad atmosphere caused by pollutants, several countries are exploring for sustainable energy sources to replace traditional fossil fuels. Perovskites, due to their ability to match the features of silicon while providing lower costs, more flexibility and lighter weight, this emerging material has been closely following silicon's lead. Although perovskites have made great progress in recent years towards being widely available, silicon still outperforms them in terms of efficiency. But now some researchers have developed the first perovskite solar cell which surpasses the 20-year commercial threshold at a lifetime of around 30 years. As of the moment, these are the perovskite solar cells with the longest lifespan. This material is very durable and matches the performance of dominating silicon-based cells. Perovskites have a unique crystal structure that makes them ideal for solar cell manufacturing. They may be produced at room temperature with a lot less energy than silicon, which makes them more affordable and environmentally friendly to generate. Additionally, unlike silicon, which is rigid and opaque, Perovskites may be made flexible and transparent, increasing the use of solar energy. 2009 was the year when this product emerged. Some of these first cells only had a short lifespan of minutes. In 2010, the device's lifespan increased to days, then weeks, and finally months. Then in 2017, a team from Switzerland released a groundbreaking article on a PSC that could operate continuously for an entire year. The efficiency of these gadgets has increased dramatically throughout this time as well. The power conversion efficiency of the first PSC was less than 4%, but researchers increased that figure almost tenfold in just as little time. It was the most rapid advancement in a class of renewable energy technology that scientists had ever observed. In a paper released last month, the Princeton team led by Lin Lu, Professor of Engineering, described their new device and a new approach for evaluating such devices. She concluded the design, setting the record, has demonstrated the long-lasting potentials of PSCs, particularly as a way to advance solar cell technology beyond the boundaries of silicon. The fundamental relevance of the experiment, she added, lay beyond the headline result and in the unique accelerated aging technique developed by her team. We might have the record today, she said, but someone else is going to come along with a better record tomorrow. The really exciting thing is that we now have a way to test these devices and know how they will perform in the long term. It's performing the work that everyone wants to see before they start field testing at scale by creating a prototype to evaluate stability and demonstrating what can be extrapolated through accelerated testing. Scientists can project in a pretty spectacular way thanks to it. Over the past 10 years, efficiency has increased remarkably quickly, while stability has improved less quickly. Testing will need to advance in sophistication for them to become common and adopted by industry. Lou's rapid aging process enters the picture here. These kinds of tests are going to be increasingly important, Lou said. You can make the most efficient solar cells, but it won't matter if they aren't stable. So what brought them here? In Lou's lab, postdoctoral researcher Xiao Ming Zhao has been developing several designs that would withstand the onslaught of heat, light and moisture that a solar cell must withstand throughout its lifetime, while maintaining relatively high efficiency in converting enough sunlight into electricity. To make them useful, several materials were stacked to maximise light absorption and protect the most delicate parts from exposure. Between the two basic elements, a charge-carrying layer consists of copper, salt and other materials, and a perovskite absorption layer they created an incredibly thin covering layer. The goal was to prevent a typical perovskite semiconductor from burning out within weeks or months. This covering layer is so thin that it is hard to imagine. Wow, that's great. You can't even see this little thing. Now, most of you must be thinking about this layer, yes? It's referred to by scientists as 2D. 
which stands for two dimensions, as in something that has no thickness at all. The tiniest thing the human eye can see is more than a million times larger than this, which is only a few atoms thick. A 2D capping layer is not a novel concept, but it is nevertheless seen as a potential emerging method. NREL researchers have demonstrated how 2D layers can significantly enhance long-haul performance, but no device had been created that could push perovskites all the way to commercial threshold of a 20-year lifetime. Who is behind this thing? Let's find out. Zhao and his colleagues experimented with numerous variations of these designs, changing the geometry, features, the number of layers, and the variety of materials used. Each design was placed in the light box so that researchers could continuously expose the delicate gadgets to intense light and track how their performance degraded over time. Zhao spotted an oddity in the data in the fall of that year as the initial pandemic wave receded and scientists returned to their labs to manage their studies and precisely timed shifts. One set of the equipment appeared to be still performing at or close to its maximum efficiency. He said that after nearly six months, there had been no decreases. He realized at that moment that a faster way than his real-time experiment was necessary to stress test his invention. The new test method accelerates the aging process by heating and illuminating the device. This process accelerates what would normally take years of regular exposure from the base temperature of a typical summer day to an extreme of 230 degrees Fahrenheit above the boiling point of water. The researchers chose four aging temperatures and assessed the findings across these four independent data streams. The combined data was then used to estimate device performance over tens of thousands of hours of continuous lighting. At an average temperature of 95 degrees Fahrenheit, the results revealed a device that would operate at above 80% of its peak efficiency for at least five years. That's the laboratory equivalent of 30 years of outdoor operation in a place like Princeton, New Jersey. It is reliable according to traditional Lou conversion measures. Most of us will still be interested in seeing how it works out, but this science is significantly more trustworthy than many other predictions. Scientists can create extremely particular applications thanks to new high efficiency and excellent tunability. The ability to manufacture them locally with low energy inputs, as well as a reliable prognosis of prolonged life, along with a sophisticated aging process to evaluate a wide range of designs combined to make them highly appealing. The new technology will supplement rather than fully replace silicon-based technologies, making solar panels more inexpensive, effective and long-lasting, and extending the usage of solar energy into a plethora of other areas of modern life. For example, the Princeton team recently showed that a distinct chemical perovskite layer may turn home, offices, labs, etc. windows into energy-producing devices while retaining their visual appeal. Other teams have discovered ways for printing photovoltaic inks using perovskites, allowing scientists to experiment with form factors that they had only before envisaged. The capacity to make perovskites at room temperature, as opposed to silicon, which must be forged at over 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, experts suggest is a crucial benefit in the long term. On the commercial side, Saul Technologies has signed an investment agreement with Japanese investment firm Hideo Sawada, Saul's goal is to merge perovskite solar cells with other existing goods, and this funding deal comes just a year after the company was founded. Saul developed solar panels using perovskite solar cells. The product would be launched across Europe before potentially expanding to the rest of the world. It also reported that a production line for the production of perovskite photovoltaic cells has been started in Kuzu, Zhejiang Province, East China. MicroQuanta Semiconductor has reportedly financed a 40-hectare factory that is expected to produce more than 200,000 square meters of photovoltaic glass per year. As we know, we always need energy, so it must come from somewhere. The present option is to burn a lot of fossil fuels. Scientists can quickly and extensively adjust perovskite properties, allowing many platforms to coexist happily. This might be critical in merging silicon with newly developed platforms such as organic and thin film photovoltaics, both of which have lately made substantial advances. Please share your thoughts about perovskite PV cells in the comments box below. And thanks for viewing the video. If you want to see more content like this, then subscribe to this channel and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. That really gives me the motivation to make more stuff for you guys.
See you next time. Until then, goodbye.